Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Yesterday, I received an email from this man. His name is Benjamin Von Wong. He's an artist activist, and he's trying to raise awareness about ocean plastics. One of the things he has done is he has created a giant art installation. You could see it here. It's a spigot or a faucet just spewing out plastic. Here's another view of it here in a playground. What he's also doing is he's running a contest. You could download various photos of his art installation, and he's asking you to create a composite. Take his spigot or faucet that is spewing out this plastic and put it in an image of your own, and you could win part of $10,000 worth of prizes. Now, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to his website where you could enter the contest, look at the rules and so on, and see some examples for inspiration. For example, here's one here, it's a playground, and you can see there's three of the faucets there just spewing out the plastic. Here's another one, looks like a major city with plastic being spilled out in the street and a koala bear and a kangaroo looking on. Here's a sunset on the beach with the plastics being littered on the beach and so on. Now, you're wondering, well, what's the prizes? Well, if we go over here, uh, here's the prizes. Again, I'll have links in the description below for all of this, and you could take a look at the prizes. Also, this website will be listed. Not only could you look here for inspiration, but you could download the media. That is, I mentioned he supplies the images of his faucet with the plastic and several different kind of angles and lighting and stuff. So you should be able to find something to use for your composite and you could check out the rules and prizes and then you could also enter right here. Now, uh, what he asked me is if I could do something else to help promote this contest and to help raise awareness about this problem of ocean plastics. And I said, what I'll do is I'll demonstrate how to create a composite in Photoshop using his images. Um, so what, I, what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to use Photoshop, as I mentioned. Uh, you could, of course, use any application you want to create your composite. But if you're new to this, um, I'll give you some pointers on how to use Photoshop to do this. Now, when you download the media, you'll get a bunch of different images of his art installation. First of all, you get five different angles and lighting kind of you know conditions for the actual faucet with the plastic. You can see there's one there. There's another there. There's another there. And there. And there, my computer is deciding to go a little slow. So you have all these different angles and kind of lighting conditions for that. Also, you just get some extra photos of garbage, basically plastic that you could use to help fill in areas or, you know, to see there's just some plastic there and so on. I'm not going to open all these, but you get the idea. So that will help you fill in blank areas or if you just want to add some extra plastic somewhere on your image or in your image, you have all this right here. Now, the cool thing about this is these images are PNG files. He already clipped them out for you. So one of the more difficult things to do in a composite is to actually clip out the subject that's already done for you. So uh, really, it's mainly just dragging and dropping and then doing different lighting effects and maybe dodging and burning to make it look like it belongs in the scene. Now, I mentioned I'm going to do a real simple one. I'm going to open up Photoshop. I have this image of a sailboat that I took in Hilton Head, South Carolina, and I'm just going to spew plastic all on the ocean and on the beach. And I already decided that I'm going to use this image of the faucet with the plastic now, there are some issues here. Uh, first of all, uh, you could see that it's cut out, right? So we have a cutoff edge here. The bottom is all cut off, and this right-hand side is all cut off. So I have to make sure that, um, you know, I make sure that is covered up somehow, and you'll see what I mean when I get to it. And to help me cover those edges, I have this little junk piece of plastic here that I'm going to use. So what we're going to do is... Um, I'm going to go to this image first, and I'm going to get the Move tool. Um, the V key is the keyboard shortcut for the Move tool. Just click right on the garbage, 
pick it up to that tab that has my sailboat and drop it on there. When I do that, I'll get a warning. That's because my image is a 16-bit TIFF and his image is an 8-bit PNG file, so there's different bit depth. Just click yes, it won't matter. And you'll see, there it is. Now I could, still with the move tool, move this where I need it. Now I have that hard edge at the bottom, so I definitely want that hidden at the bottom. And probably move it down a little bit, maybe like this. Now it doesn't look real yet because it's not casting a shadow. I have a hard edge at the right also, so we'll move that off to the right a little bit. So we're covering that up so you could see that. So we just have this hard edge over here that we have to take care of. And to do that, that's why I have this image. It's got this kind of garbage plastic over here, and I don't really want that with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the eraser tool. That's the E key on your keyboard for the eraser tool. And I'm just going to erase this, this part of the garbage because I don't want this in my image. Okay, so just like that. Now I'll get the Move tool again, hit the V key, and we'll click on this, drag it up to the tab that has the sailboat, and drag it down. I want it over here on the left, so I'm just going to let go. It's going to come up with that warning again. Just click Yes. And then I'll just move this so it covers up that area. Now it looks great, doesn't it? All right. So we have the faucet spewing the garbage on the beach. Part of the reason why I chose this one is you could see how it's re receding off into the distance. Looks like it was shot with a similar focal length that I used for the sailboat. So it looks natural. Uh, that's what you want to make sure you try to do as well. Now, one thing I forgot to add, let me turn off that layer here uh, that I added. Let's go back down to this layer. You may have to resize yours. Uh, mine happened to fit perfectly, I was lucky. But if you need to resize, your um, image of the plastic um, when you drag it over onto your image hit command or control t on your uh, keyboard that's free transform then you could come in and you could resize this as needed so that it fits your image properly you could grab any of the handles and resize now i'm going to cancel out of that because mine happened to fit fine and I'm good. All right, now, it, it looks okay, but you see how the sailboat's uh, casting a pretty hard shadow over here? The sun was almost directly overhead, maybe slightly to the right. So the lighting matches pretty well, but the overall, it's still not perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge this plastic layer that I added on the far left with the actual main plastic there. To do that, click on the top one, and then hit Command or Control E. And that will merge those together. The reason why I'm doing that is I'm going to add a drop shadow to this. And the drop shadow will be uniform now because it will add the drop shadow on all the plastic. To do this though, I have to do a little trick. Because when I add the drop shadow, if I just go down here like to FX and I click on drop shadow. You see how it's adding this drop shadow all up here? I don't want it there, right? So, so we need to make sure the drop shadow is exactly where I want it. To do this, I'm going to make two duplicate copies of that layer by hitting Command-J on my Mac twice. It's Control-J on a PC. Then I'm going to click on this middle layer. This is this layer. And then I'm going to add the shadow here. So I'll add the drop shadow. And I'll adjust it in a moment to make it fit. But we'll click OK. Now the reason why we have this uh, actual other layer on top is because what I'm going to be doing with that layer is that's going to cover up the, uh, help me cover up the shadow where I don't want it. So I'm going to, on this layer here that has the shadow, I'm going to add a layer mask. Then I'm going to get the brush tool. Hit the B key on your keyboard for the brush tool. Make sure you're painting in black. Now if you don't have black and white as your swatches, hit the D key on your keyboard. The D key gives you the default black and white swatches. Make sure black is the foreground swatch. Hit the X key if you need to to do that. Then just make sure you're clicked on that layer mask and then paint away the shadow from this part up at the top. Now you're saying to yourself, well, why do you still need this top layer? I don't understand it. Now let me turn this top layer off so you could see what happened. You see how wherever I painted, it just um, will add a shadow <laughs> there. So I don't want that. So that's why we have this top layer. It gets rid of that shadow there. Now I could come in and readjust this shadow so it better fits the scene by just double-clicking on the words drop shadow right here. 
And mainly, I want to adjust the opacity, the angle, the distance, the spread, and the size. Now, I mentioned the sun's pretty much straight up above me, maybe a little bit to the right. And the distance away from, you see how it kind of draws it away. So we're going to make it a decent distance. The spread uh, is pretty good the way it is, but let me show you what that does. That kind of makes it drawn away in a way too. Bring that back down to around where it was. The size uh, is pretty good actually where it is, but I'll show you what that does. You can see how it kind of makes it a little more blurred out actually. But you can see how the edge is pretty hard here. I don't think the edges would be as hard on the plastic. The reason being is most of the plastic is white. And the bright sun is going to be reflecting off the white plastic and it's going to soften some of those shadows. So I don't think it needs to be as opaque or as dark as the sailboat. So I'm going to back it off a little bit there. And just like that and click OK. And um, actually I think I'm pretty much done. But uh, I wanted to give you an idea of what I do. Now I think there's a little bit too much space at the top so I'm going to crop it. But before I do that what I like to do when I'm done with actual my actual Photoshop work, I still want to preserve it though, just in case I need to adjust anything. What I do is I put a stamp layer on top. To do that, I use the keyboard shortcut on my Mac of Shift, Option, Command, E. That's Shift, Alt, Control, E on a PC. And you can see we have this stamp layer. That way, if I need to do any work, you know, I want to redo something below it, I have to throw this layer out. Then I could click on the layer I need to redo, and I'd be able to do it. Now I'm going to get the crop tool. Hit the C key on your keyboard for the crop tool. We'll just do a freeform crop to there. Click the little check mark. Right that. And there is my composite. Now you need to export it for the contest. I didn't read the contest rules because I'm not entering the contest. Uh, but make sure you read the contest rules to see what file format he wants the image as and the size he wants the image as. Uh, so when you're ready, you need to export it from Photoshop. Now I'm using what they call the legacy export dialog. If I go up to file and I go to export and I go to export as, this is the old dialog box once it renders or shows. Uh, the old dialog box I just prefer to the newer one. Um, if you want to use the old one, let me cancel out of that, you would go to preferences. So on a Mac, go up to Photoshop and go to preferences and you'd want to go to export right here. I believe all of this on a PC is under the edit menu. Once you go to export, um, right here at the very bottom, use legacy export as. Make sure that's checked, like I do. Then you could use this legacy export, which is what I'm going to use. So we'll do export as. Again, make sure you read the rules so you could get the file type and size. I would assume he's probably going to want a JPEG. Uh, the width, you know, whatever width he has, um, like here, it's like, like I'll just use what it's there and then, you know, export it, give it the name in the way he wants the name. I'll just leave it there. I'll save it to my desktop. Now, once we do that, we have that JPEG now that we're going to use to enter in the contest, but we have a PSD file worth of layers here we should save as well. So then go up to file, save as. And I suggest you save it as a Photoshop file. That's a PSD file and save it somewhere safe and click save so that you have all your work preserved uh, in a PSD file. If you want to go back in and re-edit anything, you can. So um, that's how you create a very simple composite in Photoshop. Again, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to uh, Benjamin's Instagram. So you could check him out here. I have a link to this web page where you could learn more about his project, the art installation itself, and so on. You could then enter the contest, you could download the media, and you could also check out the prizes that you could win. So I'd like to thank uh, Benjamin for emailing me and asking me to help him with this. I think it's a great cause, and I hope uh, you'll enter the contest, and good luck. I hope you win something. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.